Praise the Lord. Good morning and good evening, dear brothers and sisters. Greetings to you in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's again a pleasure to <clears throat> meet with you. We keep making the statement, and it is the truth that it gives us immense joy, which nothing can buy. Right? You may be doing great in your life. You are rich. Yeah. You're you're prosperous materially. Yeah. You're process prosperous even spiritually, but when you share the word of god when you talk about jesus when you talk about the greatness of god <clears throat> to your brethren to unbelievers to non christians to christian brethren and sisters i don't think anything matches up to that um you know to to that to that state of um, joy which um, you may i'm not saying you you're not happy with other things but it's a different experience what you and i could really think and you know sense it and feel it okay so today's session is not the biblical series right we are <coughs> excuse me we have started a new uh, playlist and you can call it a series you can call it as playlist up to you but we have created a separate group where we are piling up uh, piling up the series with a lot of or filling it up with a lot of teachings from the epistles from those 13 books written by Paul includes Peter include James sorry sorry exclude James exclude Peter not just the epistles but all these apostolic teachings right and we call it as epistles or epistolic teaching or apostolic teaching uh, from New Testament and we are picking up very important um, concepts and uh, like do not grieve the holy spirit you can go through the playlist you will see why not to worry and stuff like that and uh, how to, how to identify who is your enemy all these great teachings right and these are not something that to be that is to be taken as pep talks but you need to apply those hidden truths and principles and facts into your life and then you enjoy living that prosperous life that uh, victory walking in victory and victoriously overcoming the life of, of overcoming all the sinful deeds and stuff like that don't you think that's the reason uh, why the holy spirit would have uh, in i mean the the, the apostles got were inspired by the holy spirit and he was made to write all of this why because a god cares for the mankind nothing else right so one such teaching uh, from the epistles we have picked today, I'm sure already you would have read this, right? We are going to split into two sessions. This session we are going to focus about the first aspect of um, Paul's teaching in the letter to Colossi Colossi, right? Um, Colossians, it's called as Colossians, the epistle of Colossians, and chapter two, verses one to uh, ten, will be our meditation uh, verse today. And it has a very interesting title, not philosophy, but Christ. Likewise, you have something else, not legalism, but Christ. We will deal with legalism in a separate session. We cannot mix up because each one of them are very heavy. <laughs> and this itself becomes a series. But then many people have sh given me the feedback and requested me also try to do short sessions, whereas we will get the idea in a condensed format. And let's see if God willing, we will do a detailed session also to talk about philosophy and legalism in a series format because there is so much to talk about these two. And uh, one session is just not enough, but we will see what best to do. All right. Now here we are going to talk a bit about, oh no, a lot about philosophy. But before getting into Bible, we always like to set that context right we always like to research from the worldly standpoint what the people of the world think about this and then we we then compare it what god thinks about versus what people think about right and that's like a good debate we contemplate it's not about paradoxic making it paradoxic but it's like contemplating human perspective versus god's perspective and that gives you the limelight how differently god's thoughts are from the thoughts of mankind right and then you understand where you stand and how far away god's wisdom is standing how higher it is how greater it is how unimaginable it is you understand that's 
let's start with the basics right what is what do you mean by philosophy in literal terms it's called as somebody going in a shopping spree in the love of wisdom or exposing their wisdom because they love speaking on more on wisdom so you take the book of proverbs ecclesiastes it is 70 75% words of wisdom but 25% it's about god at the end of the uh, every conversation you will see god being mixed and given more of spiritual life and spiritual wisdom but there is more of worldly wisdom being spoken there by solomon because he goes through so much of experience his own experiences and and experiences witnessed by other people in his in his in his, during his times right and that is about these people and they become many people become poets these people who have this great love of wisdom philosophical um, conversations can be made uh, i would say it, it gives you a lot of empowerment when you write it in the form of poet or, or a poem sorry when you are a, when you write it in the poetic format right? it's that's why psalm it's about wisdom but it's more to do with wisdom of god that's there's a huge difference between psalm and proverbs why psalm it is like 90% about god and 10% about man's wisdom or man's perception whereas here it's reverse and both are equally important right and both are written by the holy spirit for for a reason that we need both that's why um i'm 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 tremendously convicted and inspired by the holy spirit to speak about this why because this is one area where christendom always backslide christendom always go on the wrong side they don't tend to think that how much of this makes sense doesn't make sense they they have a big problem in discriminating and that's why we pick this topic so in a broad sense philosophy is a is an activity people undertake when they seek to understand fundamental truths about themselves the hidden experiences the hidden um, knowledge the hidden uh, truth which they are not able to expose in public they start penning it down and they print a book and start circulating it right because the world in which they live and their relationships to the world and to each other is not something that you can expose anything freely or you go put up a stage on public and start talking people will be crowded but you may get stoned to death right so many people make it in the form of you know written format and many of the philosophical things are to do with writings more than talkings right now what are the philosophical beliefs what is this system philosophy system of philosophy belief system is 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 based what, what are they what are their beliefs position where are their beliefs positioned it says that it's a basically a non religious belief all these philosophical guys no they will be either atheist or they will be kind of a social activist or they will be fighting for human rights right humanism secularism and atheism these are the three things combined together it comes under um, it, it's like three uh, pillars or trinity which makes the philosophical foundation or a philosophical stage for anybody to talk or something can be a philosophical belief if you if you strongly and genuinely believe in it and it concerns an important aspect of human life and behavior yeah it is a driving factor to change the perception of human life in the way how they are oriented and attached towards certain behavioral pattern yeah and it has a lot of good sides to it I mean, it's, it's not to be taken or considered as a negative factor but only thing is they don't mix it up with re religion they stand at a distance why because the religious system has a different belief which is completely biased and based upon the existence of god and his uh, omniscience nature and uh, yeah a supernatural way of doing miracles and all that now these guys don't agree with that why because they always look at the mankind you work hard you need to treat each other with respect you know buddhism is also more of philosophical more than god based it's they they converted it as a religion they are worshiping buddha as god but um, it is more of a philosophical you look at all his sayings and teachings it's about human uh, orientation like how to expose kindness how to forgive and how to take things easily lightly and have that hope and all that but there will be no mention of god much yeah we need to set the basics no <clears throat> if i don't talk all of this straight away I dive into bible you want to understand anything 
that's where you know christendom is lagging behind there in such a rush i don't know what is the problem with all this many of the pastors right they, they are in such a rush closing uh, immediately getting into the bible pep talk jumping or uh, this uh, god told me that uh, right all this fire energy and then they make people to jump dance cry howl we don't do any of that yet i will tell you i can promise you one thing you please get access to our channel subscribe right you will get automatic access just download or as converted as mp3 or stay tuned all of us have internet in our phone right we have 4g connections just listen and you will understand one thing we talk about three things a num- number one about god and jesus number two about how to press hard towards perfection and move towards god get close to god or become like god god himself told that father matthew 5:48 and number 3 you will see how you are prospering both spiritually and materially and we are not against materialistic blessings these are the three main um, uh, uh, what i say the main line preaching what we have been adopted to and you will see you extract all of this truth you will understand who is god and bible and all that bible is everything basis is bible basis is jesus and his blood the holy spirit for yahweh father everything will be covered okay what is the main purpose of philosophy coming back here now let's let's move from my point to your point <laughs> or philosophical point right it teaches critical thinking what the and and i will tell you these are all great uh, um nomenclatures behind the, the concept of philosophy it's very nice actually philosophy is not something that is taking you completely away but then we will have to still understand how to mix it and balance it with the spiritual deeds versus human philosophy or worldly philosophy that's where christendom has a problem and the phys- philosoph- philosophy philosophians have a problem philosophical people have a problem they don't they stay away from religion no that's not what paul is trying to say here we will read that right always we explain and then when we read it sheds more light so have patience listen to this now what is that philosophy imposing emphasizing is on the critical thinking your analytical skills will improve hmm? uh you will start looking at everything from a practical standpoint with a mature mindset and at attitude of acceptance good or bad and uh, you will have clear logical analysis yeah you will have you will search for some logical analysis mistakes or errors or failures or success or victory yeah bad times good times everywhere you will apply this logical analysis which is really good not bad at all yeah so far i am agreeing with everything that i am reading for you if you are a philosophical guy you will enjoy this conversation but hang on listen to the whole thing right then uh, I, we are not here to tame you or corner you if you are a philosophical brother and, and 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 you are far away from christ we love you that's the reason we are making sessions like this we need you to understand something here and we are going to talk about it okay now different areas of philosophy are distinguished by the questions they ask it's more of reasoning skills and bible strongly recommends you to reason the more you reason the more your faith and wisdom increases and you will fight a good fight of faith romans roman 10 17 and romans 10 9 it will help you to become a role model a man of faith love and purity 1 timothy 4 12 says that 6 12 also you can read you see how i'm drawing lines and connecting the threads with the bible understand so philosophy will help us to develop on the reasoning and analytical skills which is good that is the main objective of philosophy and that's why you shouldn't hate philosophers you shouldn't hate theologians now the next thing is what is the relationship between philosophy and religion somebody asked this question these are all frequently uh, asked questions so the answer is religion has its basis in belief upon god and his supremacy right but philosophy on the other hand is a critic of belief and belief systems they exactly mock and ridicule the religious systems belief upon god it's more of you man you work hard and you get the benefit why are you giving that glory to god what is this grace what is this mercy what is this favor of god favor of men i can understand you have need a god father at in the world to help you guide you mentor and all that but what is this favor of god they don't agree at all that is where the thick line is drawn between philosophers and the 
the the the spiritual speakers or spiritual believers philosophy subjects what some could be would be satisfied in believing to a severe examination they examine everything and i told you the reasoning skills philip you know philosophy also looks for the rational explicit what to say uh, explicit expli uh, i would say rational exposition right explicitly exposing the rationalism and how rational it is they need it to be justified as how it worked many of the deeds of god the works of god the miracles of god the supernatural touch of god cannot be justified right no one witnesses it but they feel and they testify it it's a belief system it's a faith the belief system is based on faith whereas here there is no belief no faith it's about logic show me something i believe that's it else don't talk to me greeks are like that many of the philosophers right they are greeks aristotle and we we have so many names uh, there are great and they are brainy fellows they are not some someone who is ordinary right what is the difference between theology and philosophy now slowly we are nearing toward to bible correct no now it is argued widely that the distinction between philosophy and theology uh, there is a famous analytical Uh, anal, 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 analytical expert, I would say, his name is Tillich, T-I-L-L-I-C-H, and uh, yeah, from his viewpoint, it is essentially one of the defi- definition. Philosophy describes the structure of being, the structure of how the human being and the system, the moral values must be positioned, analytical skills must be positioned with objectivity uh, as an objectivity, and and it detaches itself. from theology why because theology seeks for the meaning right it it questions the meaning meaning of your belief meaning of your analysis meaning of your explorative attitude right but these guys cannot define the meaning but they will always explain the solution you give them a riddle they won't be able to explain this the meaning behind the solution of the riddle right they will only explain the solution of the riddle why because they are focused on analysis focused on science scientifically they will prove technically they will prove but they won't be able to justify the meaning behind their proof that is where the theology plays a role yeah don't get too much worked out between philosophy theology and spiritual uh, deeds just just have an understanding right then only you will understand what paul is trying to say because paul himself is a very rich philosopher <laughs> and uh, the, the the great advantage is he's he's also a theology right he has gone through the theological way of dealing with the uh, old testament scriptures and he is a philosopher too and he mixes both of this and writes the 13 epistles wow i get thrilled and that's why when i speak of uh these letters right i i really get thrilled it's nice to analyze i don't know how many people explain all of this to you but let's see now let's let's answer another question what is the difference between spirituality and theology right now theology is definitely far away it it alienates itself from philosophy but let's see theology if it is associating itself with spirituality or it still stands as a independent uh, or union territory while theology mainly deals with the communal dogma of the church right it is intellectual objective and academic all three are mixed it is very intellectual words of wisdom it's very objective because it identifies the meaning and it is academic there is lot of learnings right there is lot of learning and agenda and its construction and judgment is often based on secular ideas of reasoning right in contrast the major concern of spirituality is personal experience of god and it doesn't completely accept that right it it doesn't agree with that spirit led conversations or spirit led deeds right why because the spirit led thing is not justifiable it is only explainable it's only something that you can feel and testify but you cannot prove it from the scriptures or you cannot say and all that right and that because these theologians will always ask you to explain the meaning and 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 i'm telling you for good reasons theologians win why because most of the spiritual churches no they are neither on the theological side nor on the spiritual side they are like half cooked vegetables <clears throat> right clapping hands fire 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 and they will be jumping up and down they'll be rolling on the ground none of this is mentioned in bible and this is where theologians gets worked up show me 
spirit filled experience holy spirit told me to take the money from the church and build a build a building over there and buy a land over there none of this is mentioned in bible church is good congregations are already built by english folks right you just sustain with that why are you having multiple congregations okay fine you have decided to buy a land in whose name are you buying in your name and then your son will be inheriting that but who's paying for it the believers in church who you think they are where is it written in bible mean it to us theologians are asking i gave it a pause because i want you to think if you are going to the spirit filled church so called um, you know some of the pentecostal congregations again i am saying some not not all right there are very good pentecostal congregations too but it's up to you to decide which is good bad i just gave a practical example is theology a philosophy we have few more questions brothers please pay attention right you need to understand this then only i can go to bible i mean again already i'm talking about bible and christians only our our own church our own experiences i'm not away from bible philosophy is theology only in so far as it deals with the nature of god and his relation to man and to the universe and for those uh, whose theory of the universe finds a place in it for the concept of god you understand theology itself is a kind of a philosophy but it deals with more with the nature of god and his relationship dealing with man they are not dealing king de associating like how philosophers as de associate themselves from bible and uh, uh, what to say the doctrines and all that they don't de associate but then they question many things asking us to prove the meaning which is not which is not wrong right many a times these fellows are not able to prove it and definitely we need theologians also to question such things does philosophy believe in god straight question philosophical theism or a theory is the belief that the supreme being exists they are not saying god is not there right they don't deny that fact supreme being is supernatural force right but that is independent of the teaching or revelation of any particular religion they don't want to associate it with any religion otherwise it becomes a religious conversation it represents the, the philosophy also represents belief in god entirely without doctrine they just say that god is there we don't disagree but let's not inherit those principles and make it religious we are not here to talk about the doctrines of god the mercy of god jesus son of god nothing except for which uh, can be discerned by reason and the contemplation of natural laws they go by the nature's way of um, looking at things and justifying good example i told you 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 win a reward and you give all glory to god why god you work hard man you feel good and give glory to yourself that's how they will question i'm giving many examples what are the five types of philosophy there are five different types of philosophy i'm not going to take a class but i'm just telling you they call it as aesthetics right it's about atheism and uh, epistemology ethics legal philosophy and logical philosophy metaphysics right they deal with astronomical things also philosophy and uh, and ethical things and legal legalism legal philosophy how by law you can be judged and how you will be abiding in law and i'm telling you all this is needed who's saying it's not needed but what is not acceptable is alienating yourself from god saying that we control everything this is how babel tower was built no they are all were philosophers and they were into metaphysics they were into legalism they were into ethics you know aesthetics ethics and all that and and creating wonders and we will reach to heaven and all that what god did i will teach you the seventh philosophy that is god's philosophy come i will confuse you go find a, a language that will unite people again you are not able to beat that right then what are you trying to prove with philosophy you but these guys accept god is there and all that but why don't you learn about his doctrines and and consider that also as part of your philosophy that exactly what david and solomon did with writing proverbs psalms and uh, ecclesiastes and song of solomon you will see a lot of wisdom philosophical statements but not without god being the centric portion there okay they explain the difference between knowledge and beliefs about the physical world and the knowledge 
uh, and believes about moral issues, metaphysical things such as God, heaven and hell and souls. Uh, but then they don't inherit the doctrine. Not, they are not staying away from heaven, hell, soul, body, mind, right? God and all that, right? There are a lot of um, centers, um, what to say? I would call it as yoga centers, which which operate as non-religious non-religious sect, sect where you will see even Christian, Muslim, everybody going there. Why? Because there are certain centers which is not religion-based yoga therapy or yoga center, and these are the centers which are biased by the or being driven by the philosophers who still deal with body, mind, and soul. They are not away, and they, they believe in God. The God has no name, no religion, nothing. That is where they disagree. Now, what is biblical philosophy? Always we need to ask that. The Bible also has a philosophy. Now, slowly we are coming to Bible, right? Always we do that. What is biblical philosophy? Christian philosophy is the set of philosophical ideas which were initiated by Christians from the second century onwards to this present day. That is how the Christian philosophy is built and whatever has been written in the entire New Testament, except that four books, what Jesus spoke, is more of philosophical teachings mixed with practical existence of men and how dependency of God must be built. You understand? I'm connecting three different things. Jesus, practical existence of men living in this world and how to depend on God and live a, live a subtle life that leads to prosperity spiritually and materially. Christian philosophy emerged with the aim of Reconciling the science and faith together, starting from the natural, rational explanations by the help of the Christian revelation. And that's how Jesus spoke, right? Did Jesus stay away from living a life, forgiving others, help your brethren, those who slap you, show the other cheek, right? If your enemy wants to carry you one load of things, you know, carry it for two extra miles. What are all these things, right? Sufferings, tolerated. Patience, joy, peace, faith, love, love for each other. All to do with life. I don't know why philosophers don't understand this, right? Okay, is the Bible a philosophical book? The Bible is not a work of philosophy which could be ordinarily understood. Neither its manner or its manifestation purposes are philosophical right it, 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 it's, it has a thin line of connectivity to philosophy but then major portion is about God and his existence and his doctrines and its character his attitude his supernatural power his miraculous deeds right indeed they are there is even good reason for saying that they are anti-philosophical and deliberately so because religion and piety are one thing philosophy and inquiry or philosophy or philosophy and analysis uh, they go well uh, together, but they stay away from religion and piety. And again, I want to mention this. Bible is not a religious book. It's a book of life. It's a book of God written for all mankind. It was not written to introduce a religion by name Christian Christianity. Now, what is a religious philosophy? We also need to understand that no religious philosophy is common. Hindu will have Hinduism will have some philosophy. Muslims will have, uh, Quran will have introduced certain philosophy, Jainism will have certain philosophy, Buddhists will have certain philosophy, Christianity will have certain philosophy. Religious philosophy is philosophical thinking that is influenced and directed as a consequence to teaching, to teach from a particular religion-based doctrines. And there is a definitely a big disconnectivity with, from religion to religion, right? They, they just don't mingle with other people when they don't agree. And that's where you see all the riots and fights and quarrels and especially in India you will see a lot of that for years for decades it can be done objectively but may maybe um, also done as a persuasion tool by believers in that uh, certain level of faith and that's not easy to explain or convince the other party last question and then we dive into Bible okay is philosophy a sin many people ask this question is philosophy being philosophical is it a, is it a sin a philosophical sin is a morally bad act which violates the natural order of reason and not the divine law. What I'm trying to say here is I'm reading the definition. The idea of philosophical sin as opposed to theological sin was advocated by those who wish to construct a moral system which is independent of God and that is a sin. 
you cannot leave god out of anything he is omniscient omnipotent omnipresent nothing exists nothing dwells nothing functions without his presence without his permission is the strong belief that is emerging as doctrine written in 66 books from the word of god and philosophy no that is not true it's all about us yet god is there god you stay somewhere but we will let us live our life that's why they have fun they will promote socialism they will promote all sorts of uh, you know isms right <laughs> socialism has different varieties right get togethers partying jolly good time and uh, chilling out and all that i will tell you the the way how the christian congregations are really corrupt these days i could see the philosophers are lot better atheists are lot better and they don't dishonor god they respect you go and pray in front of them you know what the kind of respect and reverence they show in respecting other person's belief and faith you will not even find in the religious people a hindu insulting christian christian insulting muslim muslim insulting hindu muslim insulting christian like that right and jain jain is because they they are biased of their own faith whereas these guys are universal and you and they behave the same way before a christian or a muslim or a a jain or a buddhist or a, any religion they don't care sikh or anybody they will show the same level of respect which is very hard to find right but bible teaches that we need to respect our brethren jesus never counted pharisees or never counted sadducees or never counted greeks never counted gentiles as his opponents show me a place where jesus pinpointed finger pointed saying what a man you are are you a human being that you don't worship yahweh huh where is your religious faith where is religion i don't see it in you no he says i forgive you accept the son of god today you have seen the greatest salvation sin no more he talks about sin and he asks uh, request them to accept him why because there is no salvation without his name therefore i want you to think through it he requests or a verse thing will cling you he also wants them but the choice is yours that's the gentleness what christianity promotes and all of us are brethren if they don't agree with us you admonish and they don't agree with us still count them as your brethren it's one of the teachings in epistles i i couldn't yeah i found out second thessalonians chapter 3 verse 15 14 and 15 if anyone does not obey our word in this epistle note that person and do not keep company with him that he may be ashamed yet do not count him as an enemy but admonish him as a brother you understand stay away from him why because you will end up with lot of altercations and it will end up with quarrel and fight and bloodshed right that's why bible says gently stay away but don't count him as his enemy and wait for revenging and avenging and still your brother in christ that's the how you should look at him and start praying for that sister or that you know hindu brother or muslim sister or whoever it is you see how it still unites us but we don't follow that doctrine okay now let's refer to paul i am going to start reading from colossians chapter 2 actually this is our meditation verse but still you know i always have this uh, inspiration from holy spirit that we need to talk about many things Uh, and then shed a lot of light and then we talk about bible then you understand this clearly easily right that's our style of preaching and teaching good i hope you enjoy this right i didn't hear an s can you say it loud oh good i now heard it <laughs> i was just kidding okay not philosophy but christ chapter 2 verse colossian uh, it's colossians chapter 2 verse 1 for i want you to know what a great conflict i have for you he starts with conflict <laughs> and those in laodicea and as for um and and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh uh, this is the normal way of paul introducing something about himself that their hearts may be encouraged being knit together in love <clears throat> he's talking about the power of love and love is the only thing that can unite us as 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 one body in christ right that's what he's saying and attaining to all riches of the attaining all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the knowledge of the mystery of god both of the father and of the christ you understand what is saying why is he giving this as a introduction or a punch statement 
before even he could enter into philosophy is hey philosophy and hey, hey philosophers come here you're all missing one thing why because i am a philosopher too I, i'm a theologian too and i am a spiritual believer too that is mystery of god through the name of jesus and 4000 years of messianic prophecies on this on this reasons why the world are, world is still functioning and now jesus is born crucified resurrected and the form of holy spirit is dwelling within us you want to ignore all this mystery you want to ignore all these facts who are you then he is questioning that verse 3 in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge in a way he is putting them to shame you people are thinking that you are building this philosophical world out of all the wisdom experiences knowledge that you have built through your academics through your social understanding through your um, traveler uh, across the world meeting with so many religious people tribes and uh, you know you you think you are building all of this and you call yourself as men of wisdom and men of knowledge shame on you you are not either of these because you have not uh, understood the hidden treasure as a mystery that is hiding in the name of jesus and therefore you are not one of those and paul had every right to say this why because he's he's a, he's a superman i would say he's a champion in philosophical world and theological world and and the spiritual world spiritual experience spirit filled experience went up to paradise and came back wow that one flight which took him all the way to paradise and came back that flight is still waiting no one has gone into that flight including jesus jesus has not gone to paradise only after death he went to sheol and uh, he had that paradise experience and he took all the saints and all that everything you can read in the book of john and matthew and all that luke and mark and we have explained that in the truth about the cross series what the soul of jesus was doing for the three days body was lying in rest but not the soul <clears throat> soul was restless he was doing so many things down which you won't even believe right because that's why you need to hear our sermons uh, that's uploaded in the playlist you will understand jesus had that experience but that's the only flight which carried paul and he had spiritual experience too and that's why it's very important to listen to paul you name it he is there that's why paul said follow me hmm. like jesus what what a what a saying of you know bravery or a courageous saying that no man is able to say i can you say that follow me as much you followed christ follow me can you are you able to say that paul was able to say that that's why it's very important to pay attention what he says now this i say verse number 4 lest anyone should deceive you with persuasive words what happens is you keep listening to a philosophy philosophy philosopher or a philosophical sayings you will get totally biased that's the power and it has a strong pull see you read proverbs no wow you will enjoy and i i somehow when i read the proverbs all 33 chapters no i slowly get biased more towards human way of looking things not the god way of looking things and uh, then i understood wow there is a strong pull in philosophical teachings wow and that's what paul is warning here with persuasive words you will be deceived careful and satan uses that philosophical line so powerfully that you will see lot of swami ji's muni ji's this this ji that ji etc even in us they have their centers ashrams and all that why because all these fellows having uh, names as mark luke matthew and all that they will be sitting in the ashram and they'll be listening to this fellow who's wearing all this uh, you know color dresses and then he goes and talks philosophical language right and then they build that communalism they they build that socialism they build, they make people um, not communal rivals but they unite together in the name of socialism and not abolishing the word god and that's why people get pulled but they, it's more of philosophy they give lot of philosophical examples right and they give lot of philosophical stories a man was there and then um uh yeah some one story i will tell you right you will all like it there was a man who came with a very costly car and there was a little boy admiring the car then he said come uh, into my car and he pulls him into his car and he says hey boy you want to own this car some day dream about it and all that then this boy asks him an interesting question who gave you this car how did you buy it? my brother 
is very rich and he gifted it to me then the boy was quiet then this man looked at him and asked unto him and asked what are you thinking boy now he said some day i want to become like your brother <laughs> right this fellow was thinking that he he would be thinking of him to own a car but this guy is thinking way big to gift a car being a rich man like his brother and and not being like him who will be on the receiving or begging side these are all the philosophical things which which motivates you to dream big think big yeah don't give up don't let go all this is good but not without god all of this is going to be given life and breath the life and breath is in the hands of god that's where paul is coming these are the words of deception if you alone believe in the physical philosophical concepts and facts that, that that's the truth of life agreed but who gives life to truth is <laughs> god right truth becomes a lie truth doesn't cannot give life on its own truth becomes a lie without you researching the god the supernatural force behind the truth who helps you now i am getting little philosophical isn't it so let's come back verse number 5 for though i am absent in the flesh yet i am with you in spirit rejoicing to see your good order and the steadfastness of your faith in christ he appreciates so we will ignore this verse number 6 as you have therefore received christ jesus the lord so walk in him he is giving it as a instruction here don't get derailed from this track called as christ uh, there will be lot of false prophets false people um, false teachers who come and they mix up philosophy with theology and theology with philosophy and both of them with spiritual deeds and they will confuse you don't lose this track your main line your lifeline is in christ that's what he's warning them and verse number 7 is really powerful rooted and built up in him that is jesus and established in the faith yeah because our god is rewarder of faith hebrews 11:6 and the faith will help you to be an overcomer and overcomers will inherit the throne and i say this in almost all sermons you are not an overcomer then you are having a weak system or in terms of faith yeah you don't have faith then there is no way you can become an overcomer if you're not an overcomer you don't have place in the kingdom of heaven that's revelation 3:21 okay he is talking about that rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught abounding in it with thanksgiving so far how many questions i would have answered you right as far as the philosophical facts are concerned show me a place where they are thankful gratitude will never be expressed not even to human being much why because they say what is that to thank it's all about business right i give because it's benefiting him and therefore he gave back in return something else yeah there is nothing to be thankful to the organization which promoted me it's all about my hard work what is a big deal so that thankful nature that attitude of gratitude will never be there it will be missing completely in this philosopher guys there will be little cranky fellows yeah little craziness will be there you you deal with them right there will be little rough why because i believe it's all about me you know they will be in the sick bed yet when they are cured and come back to life they will say yeah i paid and the medicines were given and it worked it didn't come for free right so what's a big deal they won't thank doctors neither the medical saints nor the and nor the god who gave him life made the medicines to work sorry i need to tell the bad side also too right okay no thanksgiving verse number 8 beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy this is where exactly we want to come but before coming here i have to spend so much of time to help you understand this statement to help you believe this statement to help you articulate this statement to help you perceive this statement if i would have spoken just like that what would you understand now i have spoken everything i have given you a comprehensive idea which you you show me anywhere in the youtube channel i couldn't find any preachings about this connecting all the three or four dots God is doing a wonderful job here right in our midst. He's helping us. Right? Anyone will cheat you. He's accusing, accusing direct accusation on the uh, you know philosophers. Paul is very strong such a quite a statement, right? Beware that anybody cheaters and empty deceit 
according to the tradition of men because this is man-made philosophy this is man-made belief system this is man-made morality no god in this it has no life in it that's exactly what he's trying to say there is no concept of god there is no concept of jesus there is no concept of holy spirit no life in it it's a dead system yeah it's a dead rubber just kick against a dead rubber what will happen you will be ending up with a fracture in your toe according to the basic principles of the world i'll read it again beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of men now you see that the philosophy is built based on traditions which is introduced and made by men through revolutions and that happened in the world according to the basic principles of the world he's mentioning the revolutions right roman revolution industrial revolution information technology revolution huh? so many revolutions introduces so many traditions so many cultural changes and philosophical threads are being pulled from those as experiences and learning no god in it not according to christ that's it he alienates it he separates it as how darkness has nothing to do with light he says philosophical world is dark christ filled world spirit led experience is light sorry he said you are all cheaters go to hell verse number 9 for in him dwells all the fullness of the god head bodily in him verse number 10 with that be close and you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and all power in other words you are incomplete the philosoph philosophical uh, teachers or the philosophers they always count themselves as complete look at us you know we are independent we don't need anybody's support we are a blessing to this world we create we invent we are scientists you know what bible calls you as incomplete yeah you have a lot of loopholes if a light is put right behind you you will see a lot of light um what to say um like an opaque like lot of light coming through you <laughs> lot of bullet holes kind of you need to fill all that holes what can fill that hole spiritual deeds philosophy of christ hmm. teachings of bible parables i think with this we will close all right i hope you understood right you may be a philosophical person but we love you we don't we don't hate you bible doesn't hate you either and god doesn't hate you either right and therefore we also we are we need to always understand that what makes you a complete person um not without bible you become a complete person that's for sure i hope you understood this right let's sing a song and we will close um let's sing an old hymn <clears throat> life is easy when you're up on the mountains because so far whatever we have researched this song is closely associated that without god there is nothing you can do in life and it's up to you philosophers if you are listening to me it's up to you it's up to you it will be too late for you to repent after you reach the white throne judgment and very late for you to even realize and repent and you will you will already burn in the lake of fire may god save you may god touch you we love you and we want to tell you this while you are living on this earth that you get enough time plenty of time to realize to again research go and please research your facts and see how it is having some life without god how it is possible please reason that and read bible it will help you life is easy when you are up on the mountains and you have got peace of mind that you will never know but things change when you're down in the valley oh don't lose faith for you never are alone sing with me everyone for the lord on the mountains is still god in the valley when things go wrong 
he'll make them right. The Lord on the good times is still God in the bad times. God on the day is still God in the night. You turn away when you're up on the mountain stock comes so easy when life is at its best when down in the valley of trials and temptations that's when faith is really put to the test for the Lord on the mountains is still God in the valleys. When things go wrong, He'll make them right. The Lord on the good times is still God in the bad times. My God on the day. It's still God in the night. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for a loving brother, for a loving sister. And whoever is staying tuned, whoever is listening to this song and listening, listen to this preaching. And if they were philosophers, if they were in the, into the line of theology, may there be light of wisdom given to them. May they have an understanding of God and help them, Lord. Redeem them, save them. We care for them. We love them. And I know you do the same with them. You love them and you care. And for all the mankind, and that's why you came to this world and you lived and died and rose again. And you are a seated as intercessor for us on the right side of the Father in heaven. And you advocate our case when devil complains. Regardless of whether he's a philosopher or a theologian, you don't care. You love the mankind. May they understand that, God. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. God bless you. Please get access to our channel and please listen to all our sessions uploaded in the playlist. And any 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 questions, you can always reach to us um, through comments or contact us in the WhatsApp number, double nine zero double two one two one five two. God bless you. Stay tuned. Soon we will meet you with another interesting session. In the next session, we will talk about legalism.